We affirm that the U.S. Gov federal government should update sexual harassment laws to prohibit simple teasing, offhand comments, and isolated incidents. According to Merriam-Webster, they define sexual harassment as uninvited and unwelcome verbal or physical behavior of a sexual nature, especially by a person in authority towards a subordinate, such as an employee or student. Therefore, we evaluate this debate with the impression that sexual harassment is a base level of sexual abuse. Merriam-Webster also defines teasing as to make fun of or kid or to disturb, annoy, or persistent, irritating, or provoking, especially in a petty or mischievous way. They also define offhand as without premeditation or preparation, meaning offhand comments as subtle comments that just come. Um, they also define isolated incidents as occurring alone or once, meaning the incident happens without others being present or only one time. Our observation is that the ProSite affirms the resolution by prioritizing the safety of others by changing the current laws in place for sexual harassment. While sexual assault is a criminal behavior, harassment is considered a civil rights issue as it violates Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, as defined by the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Harassment is illegal and can include offensive remarks about a person's sex, unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors. The present system is Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Title 29, Subtitle B, which um, talks about equal employment opportunity, Section 703 of Title VII. The need for change will help people to feel comfortable in their work and school place, which in return helps with mental, physical, and a monetary status of a person. We need to listen because if we don't, our future in society will cause lack of motivation and performance. The advantages that we have are updating the laws will help in reduce risk of numerous mental problems that sexual harassment victims may face, such as depress depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, blood pressure, sleep problems, suicide, and drug abuse. Research indicates that sexual harassment victimization is associated with negative mental health and substance abuse in adults and adolescents. There are also physical problems, and we like to call it the appetizer to the entree. Sexual harassment is the appetizer to the entree of sexual abuse. Um, People aren't showing up to work due to their mental illnesses formed, therefore businesses are not getting the money that they need. In regards to sexual harassment on campuses, it hurts the institution as a whole as well because many people are not showing up to their classes, therefore productivity is decreasing. And it also affects the relationships with people around you. Not only does sexual harassment prevent some students from full participation in academic and social events, but at times it can have effect of eroding women's commitment to careers made in male-dominated areas, such as engineering, law, and medicine, as told by Sexual Harassment, A Darker Side to Campus Life by Carla Sutherland. Also, in implementing business ethics of sexual harassment, companies which have a high incident of sexual harassment also have additional problems within their organizational relationships. After that, we um, waited and we learn that this type of harassment can include sexist or homophobic jokes, comments, unwelcome verbal and or physical advances of a sexual nature, offensive sexual flirtations, graphic comments about an individual's body, sexually degrading words used to describe an individual, and the public display of sexually subjective objects or pictures, which was also sexual harassment, a darker side to campus life. Thank y'all. So, how sexual harassment is defined by the EEOC is that it is unlawful to harass a person, an applicant or employee, because of that person's sex. Uh, a harassment can include sexual harassment or unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical harassment of a sexual nature. Now, 
according to that law already, that prohibits all sorts of uh, harassment that I just defined, such as requests for sexual favors and other verbal or physical harassment of a sexual nature. Now, uh, since the law already regards these as illegal, it would be useless in uh, updating the law, which could infringe on other rights of uh, people, such as the First Amendment. Now, if you, uh, if you look at simple teasing or offhand comments or isolated incidents, the definitions of these are very vague, uh, meaning that the language that is presented for someone uh, uh, that could be deemed as sexual harassment is already outlawed. Uh, for example, uh, the First Amendment reads, literally, Congress, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government from redress of grievances. So uh, the uh, abridging of the freedom of speech is very important here. Now, when, uh, when sexual harassment uh, includes uh, changing uh, uh, the speech of people, that completely negates the First Amendment. And uh, if you want to dictate which speech can or cannot be used, which uh, defines as simple teasing, you're going to first have to repeal the First Amendment which is very difficult to do. Uh, it's only ever been done once before of uh, repealing an amendment, uh, which was prohibition. And it requires two-thirds of the both houses of the federal government and two-thirds of states just to bring it to attention and then three-fourths of states to ratify a new amendment. So it is very difficult to do. On top of that, uh, sexual assault and sexual abuse is very different from sexual harassment. Uh, they're two completely different things. In fact, Sexual assault uh, defines uh, from the RAIN network, which is Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, the nation's largest anti-sexual violence organization, defines sexual assault as refers to sexual contact or behavior that occurs without explicit consent of the victim. Some forms of sexual assault include, uh, uh, you know, uh, touching or any sort of physical contact. Now, when we're talking about sexual harassment, it mostly regards to language and language that is used. And uh, they, they brought up the, the opponent brought up the context of uh, 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 people stating things uh, in the uh, sexual harassment, such as uh, it already prohibits language of frequency. Now, it doesn't have to be frequent, it's just severity of the nature. And sexual harassment bans language that uh, is used uh, that creates a hostile work environment, uh, such as unwelcome sexual advances, yet again, requests for sexual favors, or other verbal and physical harassment, which is already illegal. Uh, according to Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which is de uh, defined by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission yet again. Now, uh, when it comes to describing simple teasing or offhand comments, uh, they are not clearly defined, uh, and that the law already prohibits things that could include as sexual harassment, but anything that forces someone to change their speech uh, in order to uh, you know, fit a vague spectrum of words violates the First Amendment. and. Uh, you cannot simply just write out certain words that can or cannot be used when it comes to sexual harassment. You have to fully and completely repeal the First Amendment. And uh, on top of that, sexual harassment, yet again, is very different from sexual assault or sexual abuse. We are talking about sexual harassment, which mostly pertains to speech. Uh, there is no, uh, it, it involves the frequency of speech or advances that are unwelcome in nature. Yeah, the crossfire between the first two speakers. I'll start the time whenever y'all ask the first question. You have three minutes. Either of you can ask the first question. Okay, it can go? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, what is an example of updating the law, such as simple teasing offhand comments or isolated incidents? What do you deem as a simple teasing incident or an offhand comment or an isolated incident? <clears throat> well, according to Miriam Webster, it explains teasing as to make fun of, to disturb or annoy by persistent irritating or provoking, to annoy with petty persistent requests, to pester, 
Therefore, we define simple teasing as any of those comments that were clearly defined in Merriam-Webster dictionary. We also define offhand comments as without premeditation or preparation. So any kind of comment that comes without any type of premeditation is considered an offhand comment. We also define isolated incidents as occurring alone or once, meaning even if it happens once, one time, that is considered an incident to the people. Would you not agree that the law defined in Title VII of 1964 already covers these, such as, it is unlawful to harass a person, an applicant, or employee because of that person's sex. That can include sexual harassment or unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical harassment of a sexual nature. That also means not only does it have to be frequent, but it's just the severity of the issue. Do you not agree that the law already covers those incidents, such as, uh, sexual harassment, which includes sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical harassment. I do agree to that statement, but I believe that that statement does not cover everything that needs to be said in regards to sexual harassment. We have many different things that need to be added into place in response to that sexual harassment because there are a lot of things that they don't cover. There are things that even if it happens once, it should still be considered a crime. Just because someone goes out and hurts someone else and it's an isolated incident, that means it shouldn't take place. It should. It sh everyone is important, therefore everyone deserves to have the same rights, therefore everyone deserves to have the rights given to them. Now I did have a question for you. You said that um, it goes against the First Amendment right in your statement, but if we look at the First Amendment right, um, things that fall outside of its protection are obscenity, child pornography, defamation, incitement to violence, and truth that threats of violence. Do you not agree that um, sexual harassment is a threat of violence to another person? I do not agree that sexual harassment is a threat of violence uh, because of uh, sexual harassment is defined as uh, sexual harassment or unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical harassment. Now, if we're talking about any sort of sexual violence, that would be considered sexual assault or sexual abuse, which is not the same thing as sexual harassment. Okay. Sexual harassment is mostly dealing with the content of speech, and the only free speech that is illegal is uh, speech that incites violence, and sexual harassment does not incite violence. Would you not agree that sexual harassment leads to sexual violence and sexual abuse? You can finish the question. So my group members and I reaffirm that the U.S. government should update federal laws that prohibit uh, simple teasing, offhand comments, and uh, isolated incidents. Our stance is better because it gives people the ability to feel safe in their workplace as well as the other environments. If laws were updated, it would give victims an opportunity to come forward without fear that their attack wasn't important enough or it didn't have enough problems associated with it to be classified as a legal issue. Now, I know one of your disadvantages was that in the First Amendment, it's 